Hello combo aficionados, I am Brent Cook and today I am happy to talk about some pretty major upgrades to Luris Lotus Breach. And while at the end of my video from last week, I talked a little bit about those, but now let's dig right on in. So the big change I talked about in my video last week was Force and Negation. Why is this good? Main deck Blood Moon is more popular than ever and Force and Negation hits that. But that said, we're not just playing Force and Negation for Blood Moon. So many people look at this as a linear answer and that's really not the way to look at it. And instead, I think that you should be looking at inspiration from other formats. So I think a pretty good comparison is Doomsday and Legacy, where Doomsday and Legacy runs four Force of Will in the main deck, four days on top of two to three discard. And then post board, it has four copies of Pact and Negation and four copies of Force and Negation. So you have eight negation counter spells plus those other eight main deck counter spells bringing you up to 16 ways to stop your opponent from ever resolving anything that harms you, not even counting the discard spells. So why don't we look at that as inspiration here in Modern? Well, it's not exactly one for one because we don't have Force of Will in this format, and we also don't have Days. That said, we do have Discard. So, we're running Discard to strip our opponents of things like Blood Moon, or, you know, whatever. But on top of that, we, ha we do have access to 4 Force Negation and a main deck Pact Negation. One of the knocks against Force Negation is that it doesn't protect us on our combo turn. Yes, but also a little bit no. I've used it in hard cast mode on the combo turn, it does protect us. You just have to slow down a little bit if you want it to be in that mode. But you have Pact Negation for that anyway that you can get off your Wishclaw Talisman that does come up quite a bit, plus these Inquisition of Kozlock. Force Negation is mostly for stopping your opponent. And one of the ideas that I like about Force Negation, it is not tempo negative. So I can play turn one Cantrip, turn two Lotus Field, or I'm sorry, turn to Wishclaw Talisman that's going to go get Lotus Field well, without ever stopping advancing my game plan, unlike a discard spell. Where Force and Negation, if my opponent's going to try to cheese me with Double Hammer on turn two, I can force one, untap, and try to win the game. There is no Temple lost. So that's the idea behind Force and Negation is not losing Temple. You're always able to advance your game plan. That is very, very good. So... Yeah, that's sort of the inspiration for this list. So how do we make room? Because we still have main deck pact negation, we still have Inquisition. Well, what left? Land number 21. And I know it's not a popular card, but the main deck Teleria West, honestly, it hadn't been pulling its weight. I was rarely playing it as that crucial land anyway, so that left the deck. Pact and Negation number two left the main deck, so that left. The main deck Echoing Truth. Yes, that does answer Blood Moon, but it's tempo negative. And how often were you actually using Wishclaw Talisman to go get it in game number one anyway? So it was a little bit of a idealistic card, I'll say. And then the last slot's one that I actually don't love, but I do think it's acceptable, which is the fourth copy of Wish. And you might be thinking, well, isn't Wish a combo piece? Yes, it is. But it's also kind of dead until you're winning the game. So it's really only a card you want to draw one of. So I think going down to three is completely acceptable. And that made room for four copies of Pact, or I'm um, sorry, four copies of Force of Negation. And that's how we fit it into the main deck. I've played a number of leagues with this and I've been really, really impressed. And I think that this could be the future of the deck. And in my testing, I found hey, I am beating a lot of decks on the stack now. I am beating, you know, Blood Moons, etc. And it felt really good. But what I was losing to was decks that were going under me and then decks that, you know, squeaked in a permanent hate piece here or there. So I was thinking, well, how do I fix that? And I think the answer is we look at Legacy. Look at the Epic Storm. And the Epic Storm added in Prismatic Ending is it's pretty much solo white card outside of Orm's Chant. We don't really need Chant in this deck, so we're not going to play it. But Prismatic Ending, very, very strong. And I decided it's worth splashing white just for that card. So we are running a main deck Hollowed Fountain over our third copy of Watery Grave. And when you do the math, you go from like just under 91% to like 86 and a half percent to have a black source on turn two, which is an incredibly high number. And I'm not really concerned about that dip. Uh, it's so high that I think that, 
sort of unrealistic for you to think that that matters. So instead, we are playing a second basic island, which is another card that you could cut. But Blood Moon is so popular right now that I would not recommend that change. I do think ending's worth it, especially if you have Force Negation. And I've traditionally haven't been a big fan of the White Splash in Lurus Lotus Breach. But I think that changes when you have a card like Force of Negation, because Chalice of the Void Resolving isn't as big of a deal as it once was, so now you have Prismatic Ending to mop up everything else. And I think that's sort of where the difference lies, uh, in my opinion, with Ending now. When we continue to look at the sideboard, we have the other three copies of Pact of Negation. Those are for protecting you on your combo turn, so you board those in against blue decks or decks with lots of Endurance and Force of Vigors. That does protect you. For example, against Amulet Titan, I just board out Force of Negation almost entirely, and then I'm all in on the Pact plan. Um, and then we have Void Snare and Echoing Truth that can be sided in for those Blood Moon matchups, just to make sure that you can deal with one if it resolves. It's also a great wish target with Void Snare. We have our win condition and grape shot, obviously our cyborg copy of Underworld Breach, Ave, a way of beating Graveyard Hate, and then this Engineered Explosives, the perfect wish target to beat Chalice of the Void against Blue Ducks, but also sometimes it just cleans up multiple pieces of uh, like relics, cages, whatever. If they have two of them, let's just get them off the board with this explosives. That is the idea behind this deck list. I'm not selling you snake oil, I promise. Force Negation is the real deal, and I don't know why in the video that went live today, people were so against it. I don't know if it's a budget constraint or not, but the card is bananas good. Hopefully I can prove that to you here tonight. Um... Yeah, so that's what I have to say about that. And if you're looking to support us, it is completely free to like this video, subscribe, and then leave a comment. Those things really do support us. They get us into that YouTube algorithm. Why wouldn't you want to do that? You're watching this video, so clearly you're somewhat interested in combo. Help others get interested as well. And then if you want to take that next step, there is a join button next to the subscribe button. And this month, when you join, you get access to... All videos and deck lists early. It's a special holiday promotion we're doing here at the channel. And speaking of holiday promotions, I'm going to grab this from over here. Lotus Field Pioneer Combo Deck words, things, you got it. I'm giving one of these away to a lucky member of this channel. So click that join button next to the subscribe button, become a member. But when you become a member, you also get access to the member section of our discord where if you were a member, you had access to this deck list a week early. So you've had a lot of time to test Force Negation in Lurus Lotus Breach, and then you know that it's the real deal already. So definitely join, become a member, get access to that Discord. It's really, really worth it, I promise. Um, and then there's obviously other perks like donation decks, sideboard guides if you need that for Lurus Lotus Breach, a ton of sweet stuff. But we also have a... <clears throat> excuse me, a promotion over at the website, Stormy Holidays. That is code Stormy Holidays at checkout for 15% off all Epic Storm merchandise in our shop, including our mini token pack. And speaking of our mini token pack, here it is. For $13, you get 64 double-sided tokens. It has your mana, your storm, your ooze tokens. It really does have everything. Definitely go check that out. And you can get that at theepicstorm.com slash shop where we have tons of sweet storm swag and card singles. We also have theepicstorm.com slash donation decks where you can submit your combo deck to be featured here at this very YouTube channel. That's it. That's my introduction. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope I 5 0 I mean, I've been really close recently. Let's just get it in this one. I'll see you in match number one. Welcome to match number one. We're on the play, and we're about to reveal our Lurus of the Dream Den, our modern commander, our companion, and here we've opened up Triple Force Negation. I did want to draw it this league, but I don't know if we wanted it in this amount of numbers. So, if I hit a land off the bobble plus our draw step, we would have turned to Wishclaw and a Breach, but I don't think this hand is a keep. It's kind of risky. We're just going to ship it back. And here we have something that's a little bit better. We're going to bottom a copy of Wish. Notice how it's not great in multiples, so it's why I'm partially okay with going down to three copies. And we're just going to try this hand, looking for a second land off the Serum Visions. Okay. And I don't... Uh, I should probably get Watery Grave. All right. I talked myself into it. Cast Serum Visions. 
Speaking of land number two, um, I think I can bottom land three. I don't really need that, but I'll keep the dreams grip. Scalding Tarn, good deal. Okay, so I'm going to fetch for the basic island here and cast Serum Visions. Lotus Field and Force Negation. I think we keep the Claw. Pass the turn. Next turn I'll play Claw plus Lotus Field and then on our third turn try to win the game. Alright, so they've activated Scalding Tarn for Triome. Okay. And another turn pass. Let's jam this Wish Claw. Good deal. And then play the Lotus. I am drawing a Force next turn. In hindsight, I sort of wish that I bottomed it. I don't think it's going to be good enough here. But if I'm forced to pass the turn, I can always just tap this Lotus Field and counter something. So that's not the end of But it's like, it's not a big deal. All right, Arid Mesa. Some sort of five color control deck by the looks of it. Oh no. Not my Wish Claw. Um, they have five cards. Like I could try to jam here. I think that I probably should. They're most likely a creativity deck now that I think about it. All right, let's try to untap our field and play the breach. And that resolve, that's a good sign. Untap our Lotus field. Okay. And let's untap the field again. Play wish. And that resolved. Okay, so now we play the scour. And that's the game. All right. So let's cast Scour, target ourselves. And at this point, we just have to execute. Dream script, untap the field. Leave that pact negation there. Okay. I hit the other Scour. That's interesting. Remove Serum Visions and Twiddle. I like keeping certain cards in the graveyard in case something were to go wrong. I just like to plan ahead. Scour. Alright. Should be pretty easy from here. Dream Script. On tap. I don't know if the Creativity decks are Blood Moon decks. I guess I'll find out. We want to check goldfish as well. All right, so from 13, our opponent's at 15. I have 13 cards in graveyard. So from here, I believe I can just grape shot for the win. Okay, so we untapped, we twiddle again, untap. Okay, we have six mana available. Let's cast the wish. Breach, Wish, Twiddle. And then Storm 17 all at the opponent. With Pack backup still. Click, click, boom. Okay, and that is game number one. Due to having Pack backup, I'm not going to hit the F6 key here. I could and save myself a few seconds. But what if for some reason our opponent had like a main deck blossoming defense or something? Like I would just look very, very silly. So what's the harm in just clicking through? Okay, so let's see if we can find any of these creativity decks on Goldfish. I can't imagine that they'd be on the front page. Actually, did I just see one off to the side? Well, would you look at that? I did. Okay. There's the command. Remand, Hard Evidence, not a Chalice deck or a Blood Moon deck, but they do have Blossoming Calm and Alpine Moon. 
Dovin's Veto. Rest in Peace. Okay. So Rest in Peace plus Alpine Moon is probably enough to board in some number of um, creativity. Or not creativity. Uh, prismatic Ending, I'm sorry. Talking is very, very difficult. Bear with me. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to board in the Void Snare. I think the answer is probably not, because if they hit the Sarah's Emissary anyway, I just lose, because I, they're going to name Sorcery. Well, I guess they could always Ave them. So I don't lose to that, necessarily. Uh, the Emissary flies, correct? Yeah, it's a 7-7 seven, seven flyer. So I guess I could Ave them out, if, that, if push came to shove. I think I most likely want these packs. Probably want some number of ending. Probably not all four, but let's slide them down here for now. And do I want anything else? Probably not. So what I've been doing is boarding out Bobble a lot. And that might seem strange because Bobble's a card for speed. Well, you have to keep your blue count in mind. Uh, and that's one thing I've noticed quite a bit when I'm playing this deck is you really do have to think about if you want Force to be a good card, you have to have the correct number of blue cards to support it. So here we have 25, but we still have to find three cards to take out. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but this is a good number. I usually like keeping one packed in the board. Um, I found it to just be nice to get with Wish. I don't think you necessarily need all four copies of Prismatic Endings, so we can side one of those out. And now you're down to 61. What's the last card? I think you could probably get away with one less Serum Visions or one less Consider. And I think that Visions digging deeper is a little bit more important. So I'm going to board out one copy of Consider. You could also go down to two ending if you wanted to, but I just really don't want to lose to Alpine Moon or Rest in Peace. All right, Reveal Luris. Decent. I just need land number two again. I'm going to try this. Keep. All right, Scalding Tarn and pass the turn from our opponent. Draw. Land number two. What a lucky duck. All right, we're going to go get our Watery Grave, shock ourselves, and cast Inquisition of Kozilek. Force ending to fairy. Well, with our hand being a bunch of counter spells, I'm going to take the to fairy. And I don't really need to play out this ending early. Or I'm sorry, this wish claw early into the prismatic ending. I can just sit with this in my hand. By taking the blue card, we also made force negation a little bit worse. Draw. Lotus Field. We did not need a second copy of that. Um, I think I'm probably just going to cast Consider here. I don't need a second copy of Force. Wish. It's interesting. We need a Twiddle right now. Opponent has one unknown in the hand. They're probably just getting another tap land here with their Arid Mesa. And they did. They got a Rugrin Triome. And there's the Tarn. So now they're representing Hardcast Force with two unknown cards in their hand. I, I'm thinking about letting it resolve because then I can play out Double Lotus Field. <laughs> um, uh, I think I'm going to let it happen. Yeah, I'm going to. When you play Lotus Field with an Alpine Moon in hand, you don't have to sacrifice the lands. So I think it's actually beneficial here to let the Alpine Moon resolve. We have three copies of Prismatic Ending in our deck. I can also, um, like, fight over making sure it resolves with the Pact. I have an ending in the sideboard, too, for the Wish. I think it's just a good idea. Okay. Opponent has one unknown in hand at the moment. Probably getting another try land here. Heard me, or, or I'm sorry, Secret Foundry again. I wonder why that's the fetch pattern. I understand you need triple red, but are there only two try lands in the deck? 
Opponent has four cards. Scour. So this is usually a one of. So in theory, I could threaten uh, countering. I don't know. Blue, blue. So I could go get... You know what? I'm going to play it a little bit safe here. I'm going to play the claw knowing that it's going to get eaten. And then next turn I can wish for Prismatic Ending. And that way I'll have packed back up. So right now it's a little bit risky for me to just like play wish in with pack back up into the enemy because if they have double counter i get really really punished and i'm not looking to have that happen so that's the idea and if they command it right now i can use the wish claw and they went to their turn okay land still four cards in hand but by removing the wish claw, they're what is this? Nahiri. That technically removes wish claw too. Okay. Ooh, they're not removing the claw. <laughs> That's uh spicy. And they discarded ending. Okay. Three cards in hand. Draw. Well, that's certainly a good one. Um, do I have a win here? That's the real question. Let's go to 15. I think I might. Dream scripts in the graveyard, scours in the graveyard. Yeah. Let's party. There's my ending. Okay. And let's cast it. So they're going to cast Force Negation, and then I'll play Pact Negation. And then we have Underworld Breach with a Twiddle and a Scholar already in our graveyard. Really? That just resolved, huh? Um, I'm going to play it safe here. I guess I don't need to do that because it's the same. Never mind, I'm being silly. Um, I was like, I can wish for Pact, the Cyborg Pact here, but with Force and Negation in my hand, it's essentially the same thing, but this gets to continue being an action spell. And that is match number one. I guess they just didn't have a blue card that said it didn't matter. We just had it all. Sometimes it's just best to let Alpine Moon resolve. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you in match number two. Match number two, and we are on the play. Reveal our copy of Luris. Pop out the graveyards. Ah, oh, this hand's so close to being the nuts. Unfortunately, we have to ship it. This hand's pretty good. I will definitely keep this. Um, I think you're supposed to. It's really tough. Like, I want to keep the consider because it fuels the underworld breach that we will need to fuel but i think you're supposed to just take the consistency of serum visions over that let's just grab the basic island and cast visions wish claw was good i also love these two i do have to fetch one of them away next turn though so if you can only keep one hmm i guess if we get hit by this spell i don't know i think i'm going to keep the pact because if they're a blue deck, I'm going to want it. All right, not a blue deck. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. All right, so let's fetch. I go to 16, play the Wish Claw, pass the turn. All right, so the Ragavan is going to knock us to 14. They'll get a treasure. And we might be able to win the game on our next turn, depending on my draw step. Another Verdant. I'm afraid of what this turn might be. I don't want to say it out loud. Oh, here it comes. Okay, not Blood Moon. I am good with not Blood Moon. Deck, please give me another Twiddle. 
Lightning Bolt, I'll gladly be at 10. Come on, Doc, give me Twiddle. Actually, do I even need Twiddle? I don't know if I do. I'll figure it out on my turn. Draw. So, blue, blue. Let's cast it. I'm sorry, play the uh, Lotus Field, not cast. So, with one blue, I can untap Lotus Field, activate, go get Underworld Breach, and I would have one floating. I think I'm card I'm short on cards in graveyard. So I could escape once. Wish escape twice. Actually, do I have it? I just need to think this through one more time. I'm sorry. Um because I would I think I actually get to escape twice. So I untap Lotus Field, one blue floating, tap Lotus Field for three red, use one of the red to use Lotus Field. Or, I'm sorry, to activate Wish Claw, cast Underworld Breach, I have one blue floating, I escape the Wish Claw, untap, play Wish, I'm sure, I have to pass. Alright, the good news is I drew Force Negation, so hopefully I don't die this turn. All right, so I'm going to go to eight, and they'll go up to four mana, possibly five if they have a land drop. And they revealed another copy of Flooded Strand. Okay, exiling the top card. It's a stomping ground. This is a pretty cool card. It looks like our opponent's just passing here, so we can attempt to win the game now. All right. Twiddle this copy of Lotus Field. Yes. Tap for three red. Use one of the red. Let's go get Underworld Breach. And I think it's actually better here to leave a red for the wish. Okay. Yes. And now we tap for three blue. Cast Wish. Now I can play a card from my graveyard, or, or from, I'm sorry, from my sideboard. But before we do that, we're going to escape removing the Wish. And now we'll have mana to cast that Scour from the sideboard and win the game. Okay. Easy peasy, right? Cast Twiddle. Oh, our opponent conceded. Thank you, Ryan39. So they're a green deck. They could have Endurance or Force of... Um, I'm sorry, Force of Vigor. It's sort of tough here on how we want to board because I'm not really sure what this deck has. So I think leaving one packed or even boarding in the second could be okay. I do think you probably want to board out Bobble. You want your answers to like random hate permanent, so I think ending's pretty good. Uh, but if they're a Blood Moon deck, you want these Echoing Trudes, so you probably don't board an ending. Maybe you go triple packed. Or you could bring, bring in the explosives like this. These uh, endings are really for non Blood Moon decks. And if you were dead set on boarding them, you probably wouldn't board in these, or you'd have to consider just taking out all copies of Serum Visions or Consider. And at that point, you're losing a lot of consistency in your deck because you're already boarding out Bobble. You could also possibly just remove the Inquisitions, but then you get hit harder by things like Endurance. Blood Moon 2. I think I'm just going to submit this. Okay, game two versus maybe Ponza. And this hand's pretty good. I'm going to keep this. All right. Draw. Not land number two this time. I think I'm going to play explosives on one. Pass the turn. If I'm lucky enough to rip lane number two, this hand is a turn three win. 
Sprawl. So it's probably Ponza, uh, based on what I'm seeing here. Renin six, you got it. If they play Blood Moon, I think it secretly helps me. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't be against that draw. Not the land number two that I wanted here. It's not often I'm rooting to get Blood Mooned, but let's go. All right, Verdant Catacombs. Picked up their Verdant Catacombs. What is it? Yes! Blood Moon! It's finally happened! It's so funny that that's actually good here. So I think now we're supposed to consider how we could possibly lose. And I think that answer is by getting hit by... Um, so I don't know why I accidentally tapped that is getting hit by Endurance or Force of Vigor. So instead of going for it here, and I could try to win right here, I'm going to wait a turn, play the Lotus Field, have double field up, and then have double claw back up. Sure, you can have a Fury. Okay. Actually, uh, turn off the auto yield. Was I fast enough? I was. Okay, I'm going to blow up the uh, Sprawl on their end step just to have another card to escape here. Okay, draw. Twiddle. Perfect. Well, my opponents are just so nice. That's twice this league where they've allowed me to play Lotus Field. Too, too nice. Way too nice. Alright, let's untap. Five cards in our opponent's hand, one of which is a Blood Moon. Okay. Let's tap this one for black. Untap. Yes. Use that black mana, play Wish Claw. Play Wish Claw. Play Breach. Okay. And they're going to concede 2 0 over Ponza. Get out of here, Blood Moon. Go home. Didn't like need you. Uh, we still haven't really shown case the force yet, but I promise it's good. We're running a little bit hot right now. I'll take it. Uh, 2 0 4 0. Three rounds left to go. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm. But that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Round number three, and we are on the play. Reveal our copy of Luris. Really good hand here. Definitely going to keep this. Our opponent has taken a mulligan to six. Okay. The classic Misty Rainforest Watery Grave Inquisition of Kozilak Hand. Love to see it. Okay, let's tap this Watery Grave for a black and cast the Inquisition. What are we looking at here? Uh, Captain Ranger. That's kind of a problem. But they can't actually cast it. They're pretty far away. Um... Uh, I think I'm supposed to just take the Ragavan. I know they can't actually cast the Ragavan, but there's no point in taking one of their two copies of Esper Sentinel. And the only way they could get to Captain Ranger is with the treasures from Ragavan. And I just have a very easy turn three win here. Or at least I think I do. This looks just like red, white death and taxes, maybe, or red, white hammer. I'm not quite sure. The main deck blood sounds a little bit odd. All right, we're going to fall to 16 life. And another copy of Vesper Sentinel. You got it. And they hit the red source, but we're going to try to win on our turn. Get this watery grave. Oh, I should have gotten the steam vents. Slight mistake on my part. All right, blue, blue, play the Lotus Field. It would have been slightly better to have a red floating there, but it doesn't matter. We'll be fine. 
All right, so five cards in Graveyard. We'll twiddle. I think normally I'd be one card short here, but because I have the extra twiddle for mana, that doesn't matter. All right, these Esper Sentinel triggers are resolving. Yes, I'd like to untap. Blue mana. Untap. Blue mana. Untap. Add three red. Cast the wish. And now we get the Underworld Breach. And easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right. So let's untap the Lotus Field. Just exile the top three here. And now we tap for three blue. Cast the wish again. Exile the top three. Let's get that white border total out of our graveyard. No one wants to look at that. And then cast the Tome Scour. Deterministic turn three win. Through creature removal with discard backup. No big deal. Okay. Add three blue. Now we cast Scour again. Inquisition, Force, Twiddle. In theory, you could keep double Twiddle and remove a wish, but I don't like removing the wishes. I don't know why, but I like keeping them around. Another copy of Scour. Cast Dream Script. All right. Sorry, this is the boring part of playing the deck. I think this deck's actually super interesting to play, but once you get to this part, it's a little bit tedious. Okay. Storm 14 and another Tome Scour on the stack. Dream Script to untap. 24 cards left in deck. Our opponent just said uh, that they apologize for not conceding. They just haven't seen this deck before. So I just let them know that at the end of this loop, I'll eventually grape shot them. No uh, hard feelings from the opponent. I understand. I uh, Oh, they decided to concede. That was nice of them. But I decided to register this deck. Part of registering decks where you have to click a bunch is you have to sometimes go through the actions. So it's part of playing Magic. You can't be upset at your opponents for wanting you to execute the thing you signed up for. All right, so against these white aggro decks, there aren't too many cards for you to cast uh, Force and Negation on, so let's board that out, board out the Pact of Negation as well. And now we need five cards. I do like Prismatic Endings. I also like Echoing Truth. We saw the, what is it called? Um, I can't think of it now. The Paladin, that's a 3-3 three, three that you can sacrifice to Silence and it gets a... Convert a mana cost one or less creature. Uh, Rain Captain Ranger Vios? Maybe that's it? Or is it just Ranger Vios? Whatever. So Echoing Truth can answer that very effectively. I wonder if I board in a Void Snare over one of the endings for that reason. I think the answer is yes. Let's try this out. Also makes needing white mana a little bit less impactful here. Game number two. We're on the draw, and I've opened up two lands, Lotus Field plus Wishclaw. The problem is that this hand is essentially mulligan to five. Is that good enough? Honestly, I think the answer is yes. I'm going to keep this. All right. Valakut Stoneforge. Visions is a good pickup here. I think we're still supposed to remove some lands from our deck first. Helps thin, but also cards to our, our graveyard. And I think I want this Inquisition. Put that on top. Unfortunate that I drew another land, but it is what it is. I think we want the Inquisition to stop the Captain Ranger of Eos or whatever it's called, or Ranger of Eos. It's one of those two. Old monkey. Sure. 
Okay. Go pull another Watery Grave out of the deck. Only one fetchable left in her deck at this point. And cast this Inquisition. Five cards left in her opponent's hand. What are we looking at? It's just Ranger Captain of Eos. Okay, well, I had it backwards. Fury, that card doesn't matter. Valkyrie Awakening. If they play Blood Sun, that's actually good for me. Let's get rid of that uh, Ranger Captain. Pass the turn. All right, so we're going to follow the 14 life here. They're going to get their treasure, and then they'll most likely reevaluate. Okay. Four mana. Ah, this thing. Double rip. Rip indeed. That's going to hurt. Draw. Another land. I'm getting punished pretty badly here. Um, Wish Claw into Lotus Field. All right, I have to pass the turn. I imagine there's a rest in peace in our future here. Be odd if there wasn't. Okay, so they're getting in with the Ragavan. And the card is... I believe a land. Oh, it's Consider. Valkut Awakening, really? I guess they still have land rest in peace after this. I'm just pretty far behind. I kept a hand of five lands and I've continued to draw them. Partially my own fault for keeping the hand, but uh, flooding just a little bit. All right, so they can still play the Sacred Foundry from Exile and then cast Rest in Peace. And here it is. Making the Ragavan even larger. Draw. All right. I'm going to call that one. We got our first game loss of the league. Probably my own fault. Let's just focus on winning game number three. So we saw Rest in Peace. I don't think that's a big enough reason to board back in the Force Integration. I'm just going to uh, try to do our own thing. Game three. Reveal our Luris. Okay. We have three looks at land number two on time. I'm down. Keep. Okay. So I can scour myself here. It's a little bit risky with rest in peace, but it prevents me from drawing a card that I don't want to draw. Well, Twiddle's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I actually want the Twiddle. And I'm going to target them in case I draw into a consider. With the next draw, I could cast it. So I know that I'm taking a risk here by drawing the Twiddle, but if we're going to win this game, I'm going to want one. And I did not hit lane number two off either Bobble draw. I do get a draw for turn. Could be pretty risky. And there's the Ragavan. Draw. So now I just need lane number two. Or that Blood Sun. <laughs> uh, please play Blood Sun. I don't know why they would, but please. Okay, so Ragavan's going to knock me to 18. Ugh. Oh, daggers. I could have twiddled the treasure, I suppose. But then I don't have a twiddle to win with. I don't know. Seems a little fishy. Let's see what they take here. I think it should probably just be the Underworld Breach. Inquisition? No, my bad. I was like, that didn't make any sense. They took the Breach and the Inquisition went back to my graveyard. That's what happened there. Flagstones. All right, land two, please. Ugh. All right. Visions. All right. Put that on top with the consider above it. Our opponent will get to cast a consider because of us, but on the bright side, I will hit land number two. 
All right, so we're going to go to 16 here. And I had to give them a consider. What are they casting? Three mana. None of, it's not double white, so it's not Captain Ranger of Eos. Fulminator Mage. Their own copy of Lotus Field. Getting wild over here. Okay. Um, I think I'm supposed to just pass the turn. I would need another Twiddle on my turn in order to win, or another Underworld Breach. So I'm going to go to 12 here. Um, yeah, I think I just take it. Watery Grave was the card exiled to Ragavan. Okay, well now my Lotus Field comes into play untapped. I think I might be able to win on my turn now. Let's grab the island. So I wonder if they play this because they have another field. They did not. Do they lose Hexproof? They do lose Hexproof! That's pretty sneaky. Let's bounce that uh, Fulminator Mage. I did not see that coming. Uh, I, I don't know why that I thought of it. It wasn't immediately on the top of my head, but it, it did come up. Okay. Would you look at that? And now I have enough mana to uh, cast Wish into Breach. Okay, add some red mana here. Cast Wish. Cast Underworld Breach. I don't know what's in their hand. Oh, our opponent just got sick of us. All right. <laughs> 3 0, but I did not go 3 0, 6 0. So a poor keep on my part created a game loss. Two rounds left to go. I still believe in us. Stick around. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And maybe at some point, I can't promise anything, but maybe at some point, I will cast Force of Negation. I hope it happens. Please happen. Welcome to round number four. I am still Brank Cook, and we are on the draw. We I've revealed my lures. This is wild. So far, I am the only player in this league to reveal a companion, which is pretty strange for this format. And I've opened up a pretty strong hand. We're going to keep this. It does not have a force of negation. I feel so bad that I, I talked up in the intro. We haven't drawn one yet. But there's still a chance. And are we facing Belcher? I think we are. All right, let's cast this Inquisition. It's looking pretty Belchery to me. All right, so they have no payoff, but they do kill me if they draw a Belcher. I think I just have to take the Morphos. All right, I would like to draw a Force of Negation immediately. The downside is that our opponent's also a Blood Moon deck, so Force is super good here. All right, they tapped it. That's a good sign. Okay, draw. I think I just have to play the Claw here. I have to advance my game plan. I just can't play Afraid and cast the Consider. I don't love it. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, it's just Blood Moon. Okay. Draw. There's Force. At least I'm not dead. I can still beat the Blood Moon. It's possible. And I think I'm supposed to just go get Lurus here. Pass the turn. I might die to Pact of the Titan. It's certainly possible. Alright, let's... Go to our turn, draw. Need to find Wish. And I'd probably cast this Consider on their end step. So the game plan right now is to cast Wish into Void Snare. 
and find Lotus Field before uh, any of that stuff happens. So that way I just have an untapped Lotus Field to combo with. Okay, so let's cast the Consider. Uh, do I keep that? I don't think I'm allowed to. It has to go to the graveyard. Draw. There's our wish. So... I need to find a Lotus Field now. I might be able to set it up so that I can... I'm not sure. I don't... It's just... I'm really constrained on mana is the, the big deal. Or the big thing. Alright, draw. Another wish. So something I could do here is I could go wish uh, Echoing Truth and then force the Blood Moon on the way back down. That would be another option. I guess I don't know why Echoing Truth would be better than... Um, Void Snare. I'm just trying to talk out loud here. My fear with the... Force line is that I lose if they also drew something like um, Belcher that turn. And then I go ahead and force a Blood Moon like an idiot. So next turn, hypothetically, I could wish for Void Snare, have the Lotus Field and play off the Wish Claw. So tap like, I don't know, uh, the Watery Grave, get Lotus into play. And then four mana. So I'd have six mana. Hmm, this might be doable. All right, I think I just have to pass for right now. I think cards and graveyard to escape is the bottleneck at the moment. All right, our opponent's passing the turn. Draw. All right, I should be able to win now. Uh, I just have to figure the puzzle out. So, play Wish. Go get Void Snare. I could fetch twice. Float Mana. Breach. Twiddle. I think this does it. All right, let's play the Wish. Hopefully I'm not wrong here. Okay, Void Snare the Blood Moon. Oh no, I did mess up. Oh my. I did mess up. I forgot about the cost of activating the Wish Claw. Okay, new plan. Uh, I am going to play another Wish Claw right now and then try to force on the way back down. Ah, oh, that was bad. Oh, that was so stupid. I need it. If I was going to take that line, I had to put the Lotus Field into play before bouncing. Okay, not the end of the world. I still have Force Up. What if, hypothetically, I punch it on purpose in order to uh, be able to use this force, which isn't the case at all, but it'd be funny if it was. All right. Do I get punished? Uh oh, I'm getting punished. Oh, they're just passing? Good deal. Uh, let's remove the last land in our deck. Draw. So, I'm going to start off on Inquisition. I feel like it's pretty free here. Yeah, they just drew nothing this game. Holy smokes. Okay, take the pact. Um... So if I play, there's no reason to play Breach first, I think. Let's just activate these. 
So I have to get Lotus Field and then Twiddle. Or Dream's Grip. I'm going to get Dream's Grip because it's Black Border. And I like not having to click yes. Okay. Sacrifice two lands. Untap the Lotus Field. Blue. Actually, let's do red. Because I need to keep a red floating for Wish anyway. Untap. Escape. Blue. Untap. I did get to cast Force Negation. Not that it was super meaningful, because if I just wasn't a dummy, I wouldn't have needed to, but I did it. You can't say that it never happened. Cast Scour, and we've assembled the combo. We just have to go through and actually win at this point. Opponent's at 17. Untap Lotus Field, remove some other cards. I usually like starting with lands. Uh, so by the end of it, ideally my entire graveyard is just blue spells and wishes. And then once I'm down to cards that aren't uh, like blue spells and wishes, I like removing cantrips. I just really like keeping my graveyard to be fully stocked for combo pieces. Cast this wish. All right, it's from 11. Scour. It's from 12. Dreams Grip. It's from 13. I could double Grape Shot here. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Okay. The idea behind casting double grape shot here instead of continuing to uh, show them my deck, that's the big thing, is I don't want to give them even more information. So that's the idea. So we do have to be Blood Moon, which means that we want Void Snare and the Echoing Truth. I don't think Ending's worth it. EE isn't great here, so we don't want that. Let's look at a recent Belcher list. Pulling it up. Looks like it's fallen off the front page. Belcha. 1.8% of the metagame. Kahira, that's cute. Might make people think that you're elementals or something. Force of Vigor, I guess it's good for that. Leoline is Sanctity. Veil of Summer, okay. Pact of Negation. I'm wondering if I want my own packs. Like, would it be crazy if I boarded out Inquisition for packs? Like, they're probably boarding in Leyline of Sanctities anyway. And then I could win on the stack, maybe? I don't hate it. Also stops Force of Vigor. Is three enough? could also keep Inquisition and then like board out Bobble. They only have three Ley Lines and if they're mulliganing super hard. Hmm. Maybe I just board out Bobbles. Let's do this. All right, on um, the draw versus Belcher. This is traditionally a very difficult matchup. Once again, I am asking you for land number two to be a black source. Uh, I'm going to keep this. We have double interaction spell. It's hard to say no. And there's the ley line. So that Inquisition is now a dead card. Could have been a bobble. But they did mulligan to five for it. Draw. Oh, come on. That hurts. 
Valkut Stoneforge. All right, we need land two here. Ding. Okay, so I get to play my Wishclaw Talisman. Problem is that I'm still pretty far away from winning. I would need um, a Lotus Field off the top just to even play Breach, and that I would need a Scour as well. I'm going to let Recross happen, I think. Yeah. I guess maybe it's a mistake to let Recross happen, because if they're conservative, I could get punished. So if they stack, like, Reforge, Reforge, I get punished. Or, like, a card I have to force, like, Blood Moon, or if they just draw a Veil of Summer, I get punished. So maybe I was supposed to just force the Recroths. I don't know. Actually, I think if I draw Lotus Field, I just have a win. Uh, I, I didn't think about this previously, but if I draw Lotus Field, I could go Field, full Blue, Blue, Grip, Grip, Grip up to 7 mana. Mana number 8 is Wish Claw Talisman for Wish. Wish gets Breach, and then I think I can win that way. Maybe I don't have enough like Graveyard Fuel. They're thinking pretty hard on this Recroths. Do I want to consider? I don't think I do. Interesting that they put turn timber on top. And then they put that on the bottom. Okay. So they got another recross back to their hand. Draw. Another twiddle. Doesn't do me any good here. I just have to pass. Reforge. They have four cards in hand, and one of them is a recross the paths. And I'm going to attempt to force it pitching Dream's Grip. Um, I'm going to tap their treasure. Looks like we're getting a new hand. Hopefully I'm not dead. And they're passing. That's a good sign. Okay, let's cast this consider on their end step. I would like that twiddle. Draw breach. Okay, can I win here? Blue, blue. Play field. Sacrifice these two. There's got to be a win here. Okay, so now we tap for three red. Go get Breach. Play Breach. Cast Dream Script. Does that resolve? All right, no Force of Vigor. Untap. Remove these black cards. And Dream Script again. Just trying to make a bunch of mana here. All right, so now we play Wishclaw Talisman. Activate it. Now we go get the Tom Scour. Target us. And we have the loop. The only thing holding me back now is me. Okay. Wishclaw Visions Visions. Cast the Dreams Grip. Untap. Breach Island Fountain. Scour us. Breach, consider, consider. Uh, scour us again. Tarn, field, field. And I know it might not seem like it, but Force of Negation really does 
change the texture of the combo matchups where I felt like this matchup was completely unwinnable before and now I believe I'm actually going to win. We have the Void Snare in the graveyard for the uh, Ley Line already. So I have 14 cards left. Scour Us. Wish Pact Visions. Scour Us again. Okay. Let's cast this Twiddle. All right. This room is 16. 10 cards in graveyard. Twiddle. Move packed. Wish. I do need to keep one wish here. Untap. I do you have to bounce the ley line? Which I'm a little bit worried that I'm not going to have enough resources here. But I guess casting the Scour does give me one more card in Graveyard. It gives me one extra escape, I guess. I don't know if this is actually good. So no matter what, I have to bounce the Ley Line. So let's just get that out of the way. Oh, wait, is that not Void Snare? Oh, Void Snare's up here. So I have to get this out of there. So let's just do that. Pact Negation, Twiddle, Twiddle. My, I feel like I'm short on resources here. Damn. Did I not win this? So if I scour my, so I might need to cast the Visions to hopefully spike a Twiddle. So if I scour myself, I go to five cards in graveyard, four from our library, and then the fifth card being scour, and that exchanges for a mana. That's probably worth it. So I would exile Pact, Twiddle, Twiddle. I don't know why I can't figure this out in my head. So I would go down to four, and then I'd have eight which is one short. Pretty sure that's short. Seven minus three is four plus eight. Yeah. Hmm. So eight cards play wish. I'm like burning my clock too right now. Five mana. I should actually see if I have any twiddles left. I'm not even sure if I do. Three, so there's one twiddle somewhere in my deck. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I used all of the dream scripts early on. One, two, three. Yeah, so there's no more dream scripts. I have one twiddle and four cards. So a 25% to hit. Void snare. would leave me with one escape. I could escape Void Snare, and then I get one escape for Wish, but then I'm short on mana. And if I scour myself, I only get two escapes after that. And it'd have to be Void Snare, Wish, and then I'm short on mana. Yeah, I just have to guess the Serum Visions. And I hit the twiddle. Wow. Wow. How lucky. All right. 25 percenter. I believe that does it. I can't believe I just hit that. Okay. Wish. Sorry that it took so long. It's just, uh, for some reason, I couldn't wrap my head around it. Cast this wish. And I can't do anything about that. So 
I guess they go ritual manamorphose in response and pay. I mean, I just have to let that go. I can't do anything about it. So ritual manamorphose it needs to be. Ritual. Ritual manamorphose. Yep. Damn. It's rough. I don't think I can win this now. So close. Put the uh, Larist in my hand. That's a heartbreaker. Now I'm going to have to win game three very, very quickly. Force it. Okay. Draw. Let's just see what else is in their hand. I'm not going to be able to win this. So many veils. Okay. So with Veil and Leyline in their deck, I think I might want to board up the discard spells. It might be kind of crazy though. Is this insane? Maybe I just do three bobble. I'm going to try this out this time. Uh, that was a heartbreaker. Seven minutes. I can do this. All right, let's go. All right, they kept a hand without ley lines. So it must be pretty good. Consider. I have to mill it because I just need land number two. That hurts. Come on, deck, give me watery grave or a fetch land. Draw. And it is lost. Okay. I needed to hit that land on time. I think I'm just dead. Yeah, I just have to pass here. Come on. So we hit land two. The problem is that now I also need to untap, and I don't think that's going to happen. Let's see what they do. I might just be dead. Resolves. Come on, let me untap. Okay. It's looking good for the home team. I have double packed a negation back up here. Blue, blue. I think it's just time to party. Okay, six minutes. We can do this. The uh, Tome Scar is already in our graveyard. And a real breach. Cast it. They have six cards. Twiddle. All right. So we can now pact from our graveyard with Underworld Breach, too. So is this a Veil of Summer? Pact Veil of Summer. Okay. Did we just get this? I have to win in five minutes. Scour. A little bit nervous here. Scour. All right, I have five minutes. I shouldn't play too quickly. Five minutes is plenty. All right, let's remove these three. Storm's 10. 
Scour targeting me. Remove these three. I don't need Void Snare anymore. All right. Untap. Strand Force Visions being exiled here to escape. It's from 13. 20 cards left in deck. Scour. Wish. Claw. We can remove a Pact of Negation. We have a bunch of them and a Wish. Scour again. 10 cards in deck. Twiddle. Okay. Yes, untap. Scour. All right, we are officially decked. Consider, consider, twiddle. Now we have no library and we just have to finish it off. Three and a half minutes. Untap. Remove these three lands. Well, two lands and a consider. Untap. We can remove the Tome Scour now. We don't need that. It's from 20. Cast Wish. Remove Twiddle. Twiddle. Dream Script. Okay. Dream Script to untap this. Remove Wish. Wish. Grip. And this will allow me to double uh, Grape Shot if I need to, but I can also cast Pact here. <sighs> I can't believe it. I think we got it. Hell yeah! 4 0! That was a hell of a match. Wow. I think Force of Negation probably, at least, you might not believe me here, but they had to respect Force of Negation in Game 3, and I think that bought us just enough time to win the match. Whew, that was a nail biter. I'm very nervous. We won with two and a half minutes left on clock. Wow. Let's see if I can just close this out, get the 5 0 for the camera. I would love that. Stick around. Hopefully, match five will be just as, just as exciting. Hey there, round number five. We are playing for the five. Oh, let's get it. We are on the play. Reveal our Luris, and let's party. Once again, no companion for our opponent. We've opened up a stellar hand. We'll be keeping this. Our opponent has taken a mulligan. And again, down to five. Okay, well, we're going to start off on the classic Watery Grave in Inquisition of Kozilok. Okay. Gassed it. Counterspell, Stoneforge, Ice Fang. Let's get rid of that Counterspell. Pass the turn. Okay. We're just going to play our Wishclaw Talisman here. Pass the turn after that. Probably they'll play one swept teeth into Mystic here. That's what I would guess, but you never know. And it looks like a Stone Forge. Ooh, ending. Okay. We do have this backup talisman. Not a big deal. Wishclaw. One has three cards, one of which is unknown. Sacrifice these two lands. Pass the turn. So we're a Twiddle, a Breach, and the Scour away at the moment. All right, so Stoneforge, that happens. I think on my turn, I'm probably just going to Wish Scour to reduce the number of things that I need to win. Does that do it? I believe that does. They have one unknown in hand. Let's get the vents. So I tap this for red, pl play Lotus Field, or tap Lotus Field, go up to four mana, down to two mana, play Breach, activate down to one, go get Twiddle. Twiddle, twi it doesn't work. 
Um, so instead, I'm just going to cast Wish and then Scour. Long pause here. They might have drawn the Force of Negation. All right, Scour. And no Twiddle in there. Okay. Picked up a Hollowed Fountain. Three mana, Geist of St. Traft. All right, so still only one unknown in our opponent's hand. Draw. I'm going to start off by playing the Breach. Because if it gets hit by Force, I don't tap my Wish Claw. All right, so it resolved. All right, so hopefully I don't get bit in the butt here. Grab the Dream's Grip. Untap Lotus Field. Okay. It's looking good. So it looks like we've sealed up game number one. Untap again, just trying to make a bunch of blue mana. Which would then, if for some reason our opponent has something wild, I would have Force Active. Now Scour. Scour again. Alright. Storm 7. Remove Triple Inquisition here. Storm 8. Let's twiddle. I guess the one nice thing about running 7th edition twiddles is that they're very easy to find when you're trying to escape. Alright, so let's scour again. Remove the twiddle. We don't want white border cards in our graveyard anyway. Scour. Consider. 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 Storm 11. Okay, so this one is going to knock us down to six cards in library. And one card in library. Alright, no more casting Tome Scour. That's off the menu. Untap. We can remove the Scour now. It's from 14. Untap. Okay, it's from 15. Let's just keep on untapping. Why not untap? Consider Visions, Dreams Grip. That's from 16. Cast the Wish. Twiddle, twiddle, twiddle. And Grip Shot. Okay, so that is game number one over Bant Stoneblade. Take it. All right, I'm just going to hit the F6 key. If I get punished, I get punished. Okay. Going into game number two. I don't think that this is a force and negation matchup, so I'm going to board those out. I am interested in prismatic ending. I'm also interested in these packed negations. So going up to 63 cards. And I think you're probably supposed to just board out bobbles again. And then you can board in one more answer. So either the explosives or one of the blue spells. Um, and I think it should probably just be echoing truth. Because it, this answers mul multiples where these only answer a single card. So it just gives you a little bit of added flexibility. Plus, if you're going to cast a bounce spell off of Wish, you'd rather it be Void Snare than Echoing Truth. So this is how I'm going to board for game number two. All right. Reveal our copy of Luris. The sand seems great. Keep. We will need the Serum Visions to find land number two. One swept teeth. The question is, do I fetch for the hallowed fountain or do I get watery grave? Mbop. Birds of paradise. 
all right, I'm going to keep back the visions. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, delta, so that way I can choose later. Caster and visions. Uh, this, both of these are actually really good. I don't know if it really matters the order that they're in, but I don't think I'm actually going to fetch the delta away now. Island. Okay. Stoneforge is fine. Cauldra. Draw. They have five cards. I wonder if playing Wishclaw here is better. Because maybe they'd spend mana on Prismatic Ending. Yeah, I think it's probably just the right play here. Like, I don't need this Wishclaw, and if they spend a bunch of resources or time answering it, that's a win in my book. So they have Cauldra, and then after their draw step, they will have five other cards. One white, one blue. So it looks like Cauldra's entering the battlefield. And we're going to take five going down to ten life. Okay, draw. Did not need a Misty. Red, blue. Play the Lotus Field, sacrifice these. Attempt to Dream's Grip. Okay, blue. Breach. Good sign so far. Untap. Force of Vigor. I think I'm supposed to activate this now. Go get another Pact. So this way they can't respond again without me getting punished. It looks like they just hit the F6 key, which means that this is a victory. Scour. Hell yeah, 5 0. I just need to not mess this up now. Okay. Untap. Ending. Land. Inquisition. Storm is 7. Scour. Wishclaw. Visions. Consider. Scour again. All right, and let's twiddle. Storm 11. All right, we're getting pretty close. Scour. Turn three with packed backup. Technically double packed backup. God, this deck is good. All right. Twiddle. I just want to make sure I'm casting the right spell here. I feel like the only way I lose this is if I mess up. So I'm just trying really hard to not mess up. All right, it's from 13, 14. So twiddle, twiddle, wish grape shot would be enough. I have 10 cards in graveyard. I'm just going to keep on scouring here just to make sure. Okay. Scour again. Cast the Dream Grip. Remove these. And we can cast the Scour to go down to two cards in deck. Remove Wish. Wish Twiddle. All right, Dream Grip. Untap. Okay, grip again, untap, remove the scour, twiddle, grip. It's from 20, cast the wish. Twiddle, twiddle, twiddle. All right, this looks like it's going to be it. Cast grape shot with pack back up. Technically double pack back up. Wooch, wooch. 
Five O. Damn, it feels good. And this time I am just going to sit here with my finger on the one button. So that way if they respond, I can always counter. And just like that, we got the trophy. Love it. All right. So, woot woot, trophy, all that good stuff. You know what? I'm going to screenshot this. Maybe I'll use it on Twitter. Advertise this video. All right. So, let's go back, look at the deck list. I don't think I change anything. I know that we didn't really cast that many force negations in this video, but I promise you it's a major upgrade. Prismatic ending is also a really big upgrade for this deck because now ending doesn't need to hit blood moon where previous versions of this deck, it was sort of the thing that weighed down ending is that like it answered everything perfectly other than the spell that just wrecked you. So now you kind of have the format covered between force and negation and prismatic ending for permanence. And then for spells you have, you know, four inquisition four packed. So you have to, you have eight cards for either thing, spells or permanents that wreck your opponent. And that's sort of the big idea with this list. I'd be interested in your thoughts. Uh, if you think that I'm wrong, explain why. I know that this is only one league. I wouldn't let a small sample like one league deter you away from force negation, but I'm certainly open to listening to why you think it might not be good. Um, thank you for watching, and why not? Just because we 5 0 let's open up all the chests, see if I get anything good. And... Oh, gross. Why would they give me a Karn? Are they trying to insult me? It's just like straight disrespectful. Come on. Um, you have a Maya Coast, former Pioneer playable. I don't think that thing's very good, but you never know. Uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate all of you. Have a great day. Keep storming your beautiful, and I will see you soon. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.